What's up? And welcome to another episode of Evie's Review. Introducing Baxid. As you may have seen in some of my previous videos, I'm a huge fan of music, in particular artists like Pet Shop Boys and Mark Almond. In my never-ending quest to combine my skill and technology with my passion for music, I embarked upon a journey about a year ago to sit on my, I mean, build my Baxid. For those who don't know, the MOS Technology 6581 SID, or sound interface device, was one of the first true analog synthesizers built into a single integrated circuit. This was back in 1981. Fast forward to present time, geeks like you and me love to tinker around with vintage computers, and the SID chip happens to be one of the most common points of failure in the ever-striving Commodore 64. Having completed quite a few repairs that were missing the venerable SID, I set out to make my own. This was no easy feat as I had to learn quite a few new things. Getting a CPU on a tiny dual inline package involves quite a bit more work than using an Arduino style device. You need a custom bootloader and debugging probe. With a lot of trial and error, I got the waveforms and volume envelopes pretty close to the original, as well as the nuances of the register control scheme. Thank you to my beta testers, including Mario, Humberto, and Doug. They pointed out some issues in the sound, including some distortion. Part of the distortion was caused by having an output level that was a little bit too high. I don't know about you, but I like some distortion. So for that reason, I added an overdrive setting if you want to crank it up. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Um, put it up to 11. 11, exactly. Normally you'd want to do some oversampling, but I reached the limit with my CPU's processing power. I added a smoothing option to round out some of those rough edges. Now for the purists, the original SID has two models, the 6581 and 8580. A major difference was the filter frequencies. The 6581 had deeper bass tones with the low-pass filter, while the 8580 was a bit tinnier. I won't go into all the details, but I found a happy medium and created my own blend setting. If you want something more true to the individual models, I've added settings for that too. If you use paddles or a mouse, the Baxit has full potentiometer support, although the audio pass-through of the original SID is not implemented. I think you'll find that the Baxit has an aggressive, punchy, and all-around faithful sound as compared to an original SID, but I included the capability to upgrade the firmware in case any rough edges need to be ironed out. In addition to the brand new Baxid, I have also made some updates to my existing products. The Backbit cartridge now has a Pro version which supports multiple systems through individual adapters. If you're using the Commodore 64, it now offers full Easy Flash cartridge support. The chip tester also has a Pro version offering support for 48 pin chips in a stronger socket and improved pin protection. The Genesis got a version 2 integrating features of the 2-bit joystick doubler as well as full 8-button support. There are major chip shortages this year, particularly for microcontrollers. So if you're interested in any of my products, be sure to place an order sooner rather than later as future product batches may be delayed for several months. Well, that's about all I have for you today. Tune in next time for another episode of Evie's Review.